Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Prospect Central 101. My name is Chris, and today I'm going to be doing a Lions video for you guys about this guy right here, Mike Daniels. So, the Lions just signed him to a one-year deal worth uh, $9.1 million total and $7.8 million guaranteed per Aaron Schefter. And I'm going to talk to you guys, obviously this is a Prospects channel, but for those of you guys who have been following the channel for a while, most of you guys are pretty familiar with the fact that I'm a Lions fan. So, this news kind of caught me a little bit off guard. Uh, definitely did not expect him to come here. Uh, and then, even better, we saw a tweet from Ian Rappaport for what he's worth, saying that he actually took less money than four other teams offered him to come play for Matt Patricia. So I'm going to react to that a little bit uh, and take you guys through not only what that means for this year and his one-year deal with Lions, but also what it says about this team going forward into the future of the Matt Patricia 5.0 era. So first things first, let's just talk about this guy on the field. Excellent defensive lineman, really, really good over the guard. Uh, PFF is extremely high on his three-tech ability. He graded as an 89 PFF grade, I want to say, uh, lined up at three tech position, which is incredibly good. That's, I think Aaron Donald was like a 91. So give you guys an idea of what we're talking about here. That is incredible talent. Uh, but he also has the ability to play 1-5, which is why the Lions were interested in him on our end and what he's going to be playing a little bit of in Detroit. So, one thing that really stands out about this Patricia defense is versatility, and Mike Daniels is that to a T. Uh, he is extremely, extremely good against different types of lines. He can shoot, he can hold, uh, he can shed, he can play both sides, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and he's really a matchup guy. He's one of those players who you can put against the guard one week, put against the center the next, put against the inside arm of a tackle the next. So it'll be really, really fun watching him work with Matt Patricia. And I'm sure that's probably what really attracted him to Patricia as well and why he took less to come to the Detroit Lions. So uh, from the deal perspective, like the deal, obviously you're going to have to give him some money, right? But we did play him less than other teams and we only had to pay him for one year. So if he does have injury issues again, just let him go and, and try somewhere else. But there's always the hope, hey, maybe we can keep him this year, get him in here. 30 years old, right? Still probably playing at his peak level for about a year or two left. Maybe re-up him if we aren't able to bring back A-Shong, if we aren't able to get CX on an extension, etc. Uh, things of that sort. And really give this a test run and see what he can do his first year before looking ahead too far about him staying with the team. So, beyond uh, the actual contract here, one thing that I really like the most about this signing for the Lions is what he's going to bring to this team uh, on the practice field and off the field as well in the locker room. So, obviously, he's a very productive guy, right? We've seen five stacks, I believe. I have his numbers in my article here somewhere as well. Uh, last year, 2017, when he made the Pro Bowl, he had 49 tackles, 34 for, solo, 10 for a loss, and 5 sacks. So, uh, very productive guy who has the ability to, to get you some numbers and limited playing time. But also, someone who's going to add to this team's character, right? So, one thing that Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia really emphasized during their regime is their ability to bring in guys that have high character, work ethic, toughness of both mental and physical and overall just really want to self-improve and I think that Daniels is probably the perfect fit for that kind of locker room and another thing that probably attracted him to coming to the Detroit Lions so what I think that this says about this team in 2020 is first off that this team views themselves and some other people in the league view this team as someone who's going to be able to do something. This isn't a team like USA Today 3-13 and tied for worst record in the league. That's a bunch of baloney at this point. You just There's a lot of really, really intelligent people around the game 
that actually believe the Lions are a good team. So don't buy into the national media hype about the Lions finishing last in the division. That's not going to happen. This is a team that is ready to win games in 2019-20 to 20 season and hopefully make a run of some kind, even just getting to the playoffs would be cool, but making a run of some kind uh, in the playoffs. I don't think this team is ready for a Super Bowl just yet. I do think we're probably a year away from going to the end of the world here, but I do think that we're taking huge steps in the right direction, and Mike Daniels willing to come to Detroit is one of the indicators that a lot of other people believe the same way. So, first off uh, is his character, right? He's a very high character guy. Work ethic is rumored. Well, I shouldn't even say rumored because it's probably a bad word. But uh, reported to be off the charts. Uh, one of those guys was a team leader in Green Bay for five years now, at least. He was drafted in 2012, uh, and one of those guys who's really going to be able to take Deshaun Hand in particular under his wing and kind of bring him along. And uh, Hand had RGF last year, Ricky Jean Francois, and he was a good guy for a year, but he didn't necessarily bring the on field production that a guy like Daniels is going to be able to bring. Daniels, a pro bowler, as we just looked at in 2017, two years ago. And he still can play at that level. He was very good last year, just had an injury-shortened season. And he can still produce at a very high rate. Even last year, he was top 10 in pass rushing amongst interior linemen. I believe he was 8th, to be exact, uh, according to PFF. So definitely a very good pressure rate still. Uh, and has the ability to put quarterbacks on the ground like we see him doing Matthew Stafford right there. So... Definitely a lot to look forward to uh, from a production standpoint, but also the leadership of him in this defensive line room and what he's going to be able to do with Matt Patricia as well outside of on the field. Uh, helping game playing for Green Bay, helping the defensive line coaches learn that Green Bay O-line. Uh, because I don't know if you guys saw it, but there was a story a couple of years ago, a couple of weeks ago maybe, I don't even remember, about how Green Bay teaches their offensive linemen different offensive line blocking techniques and how they basically teach the hug technique and that's what's made Baka Tiari, uh, Tate Lane Taylor, Brian Bulaga, all those guys so effective. And hopefully what Daniels will be able to do is help those guys like Deshaun Hand, like Ashawn Robinson, more more so Hand because they're the same position, uh, a little bit more than Ashawn is, learn that how to beat those kind of offensive line tendencies. He's gone up against the Bulagas, the Hands, or the, not the Hands, the Bulagas, the Taylors, the uh, Bakhtiaris in practice. So hopefully he's familiar with how they block, how they, how they move, things of that nature, and their blocking scheme. So that'll be a really, really handy asset for Matt Patricia to have going into 2020 if he chooses to utilize that. Um, so that's pretty cool also, but... One thing, another thing I'm really, really excited about that this signing is going to add to is the depth, right? The snacks conditioning, he's an elite, elite talent, probably the best run defender in the league. Conditioning along the defensive line, particularly on the interior, is always rough. And guys get injured, guys get tired. Having depth along the defensive line, especially the interior, is critical in the NFL. And Mike Daniels will only continue to add to that depth along the interior defensive line. And the other thing that's going to be really, really nice, and I'm going to talk about this in my next Detroit Lions podcast piece, uh, is the versatility uh, that this is going to add to. And one thing that the Lions are doing a lot of is putting guys in different positions depending on matchups. Mike Daniels is able to win different matchups is going to really be able to help guys like Trey Flowers be in the most ideal position to succeed week in, week out. Deshaun Robinson, most ideal position to succeed week in, week out. Especially Deshaun Hand, ideal position to succeed week in, week out. And it's going to only help those guys grow, finding more success. And it's going to give guys like Hand competition. 
earn your reps, earn your snaps, earn your playtime, produce at a high level so you can beat out other guys or basically split with other guys. So uh, the things that this is going to do for Deshaun in particular is going to be extremely, extremely fun to see throughout the rest of camp and heading into the preseason and regular season. Uh, hopefully, it'll give Deshaun a little bit more of that mental toughness, a little bit more of that com competitive grit that he started really, really showing last year when RJF was here. And he was one of the leaders last year along the defensive line. We didn't have snacks early on last year. Uh, RJF was more of a culture guy, but he didn't really do a lot on the field. Um, Zygiansa was hurt for most of last year, so Deshaun kind of had to step up a little bit and take over some leadership role. This year, he's not going to have to do any of that. He's going to have to be the guy who's basically the, the grit and grind uh, depth guy. I, I almost don't want to call him a depth guy because it'll be getting starting reps, but uh, he's going to have to be that guy that kind of follows these guys. He's going to have to be more of a follower than a leader. And it's going to be interesting to see how he adjusts to that a little bit uh, coming from Alabama, where he was behind Quinn Williams and, and play with Isaiah Bugs and everything else. I'm sure he's used to it, but uh, it'll be very interesting to see how he continues to grow and develop, learning from mentors and having guys that are going to assist him and playing next to him that will be able to either take away blocking, uh, be able to recognize where, different, where offensive linemen are going, recognize blocking, uh, assignments and things like that, a little bit more experienced than him, especially against NFL talent. So really, really looking forward to see how Deshaun develops mentally this year and if he can take that jump uh, with guys ahead of him that are top-tier talents. Uh, Deshaun, or not Deshaun, Mike Daniels, pro bowler two years ago. Trey Flowers has pro bowl talent. Uh, Damon Harrison, if he were a lot, if he were not aligned last year, he would be in the Pro Bowl, right? So there's all kinds of talent along this defensive front ahead of him, and hopefully that helps him kind of develop. And the Lions won't be able to really won't I should say have to force him into the fire this year as often as they did last year, which is incredible news. So definitely, really looking forward to seeing what this does. In 2019, as far as Mike Daniels on the field and in practice impact. Now, the underrated aspect of this, and what I think is going to be most important about this move, is the culture that Daniels is going to bring to the Lions beyond 2019. And the kind of legacy and impact that he's going to leave once his deal is over. And whether he chooses to leave next year, whether we choose to let him go after next year, whether they both, whether we both agree to stay with it another year beyond, uh, I think that the legacy of this signing says more about the future of the Lions, almost compared to what it does the present. And that is that the Lions culture has already shifted. And this isn't one of those moves that's a culture shifter. RJF last year was a culture shifter. Um, Trey Flowers was kind of a culture shifter at the very beginning of this offseason. And then Amendola was kind of one of those culture shifters too, but even that, I consider him more of a culture builder. And Mike Daniels is a culture builder. And I think that that's going to be the lasting legacy of this move, is the fact that he is going to be able to come in and build a culture. And once you're able to kind of get over that initial hump that Patricia did at the very end of last year, is when you can finally kind of transition and shift. And that Green Bay game last year, I think, especially considering we have Mike Daniels now, says a lot more about where this team is headed than the Jets game did last year. And the, the shift kind of took a long time last year. We saw 16 weeks of a culture shift. 
But I think that the culture had finally shifted week 17, and that is where we are today. It is a position where the Lions have control over the locker room, over the players, and over the identity of the team. And what we saw in Green Bay, in Lambeau, Week 17 last year, is what we can expect to see more of in 2019, and just as, if not more importantly, 2020 and beyond. And this is one of those moves where, yeah, it's cool we have Daniels for a year, and he's going to be a great player for us over the course of his stay here, but his ability to come in and along with guys like Flowers and Snacks and, and all these other guys that we added, Amendola especially, they're going to be able to continue a culture shift from last year, but most importantly, they won't have to shift as much. It'll be more about building off of last year. And that's going to be what the difference is between this team and 2017-2018 season. Or, I mean, 2018-2019 to season. Is that... We already have guys that have come in and flipped the script. Now it's about writing it. And Mike Daniels is going to be one of those guys who comes in and helps us write what we want to do. And I expect that this is going to be more of a more of a compete year. Last year we got to see a, a kind of rebuild of sorts. Uh, one year rebuild, I guess, but a rebuild of sorts with the transition from Caldwell to Patricia. And there were a lot of players last year who didn't buy in. There were guys who had to get traded. There were guys that got cut. There were guys who weren't able to produce as well that we had to basically lower their standards or lower their depth standing and lower our expectations for certain players. And I feel like Going forward, that won't have to be the case. Now we have guys who are, are here to compete, are here to win their jobs, are here to earn their spot on the team. And I I guess kind of earn their stripes is the best way to put it, but we're not the Bengals, so I don't really want to steal that. Uh, but mostly change the character of this team from a team that was here to play to a team that is here to play. Uh, and win games and compete both with each other and against opposing teams. So overall, I think that what this move is going to do in terms of helping young guys is going to be more important than Daniel's actual on-the-field impact. And the culture that he is going to leave guys like Deshaun Hand with, like P.J. Johnson with, uh, the kinds of things that, even across the board, that, that this kind of mentality is being built across the team, and that we're going to be bringing up young players throughout the next few years with. And the fact that we can have guys like Carry On Lee already in his second year teaching guys like Ty Johnson. We can have guys like Deshaun Hand in their second years teaching guys like P.J. Johnson. We can have um, I guess another example would be the offensive lineman teaching the UDFAs that we signed, working on the third team. And we got to see the start of that in day one of camp yesterday. We got to see defensive linemen asking for pads after practice. We got to see linebackers working with the, with the front four and the front three, depending on the set, extra afterwards. We got to see Danny Amendola leading running backs through catching drills. We got to see uh, some of our secondary guys leading gunning drills. It's like the simplest little details are going to be what separates this team from others. And I think what's really, really cool about this is seeing everything kind of click with this roster and the way that the team is being built with this kind of tough, grit and grind, competitive identity. And every single year, it's always the teams that build the strongest identities that always have the most success. And 
that's why the Patriots are so successful, because they already have established their culture into what they're building. And I feel like the Lions are really, really on the edge of that. And the identity of this team isn't going to be something like pass offense or run offense or defense, right? Matt Patricia is a defensive coach, but I don't think the identity of this team is going to be defense. Bringing in Bevel, right? A lot of vertical passes using Stafford's arm strength. I don't think the identity of this team is going to be a vertical offense. I think the identity of this team and what's going to separate this team from everyone else in the entire league and why the Lions are going to be successful in 2019 is because their identity is not based on a particular aspect of the football team. It's based on the team as a whole being mentally tough and versatile. So with that being said, I hope you guys are looking forward to this. The hope Lions fans, I should say, as much as I am, and really excited about what this means for the city of Detroit and its sports teams. Because what this says about the Detroit Lions is that we can compete and that this is no longer SOL, same old Lions. This is the Matt Patricia Bob Quinn Lions. And this team will find success in the future. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. But for now, peace out.